it gives me a lot of pleasure, a pleasure to introduce our next presenter. Um, Stefan has been sort of at the forefront alongside me right from the beginning of the campaign and through Prof. For the tyre industry, I, our major colleagues of ours in the rescue and recovery industry. And we've got much common ground in terms of training and in terms of safety. I was given the honour about two years ago before lockdown to address the NTDA National Conference and I'm immensely proud to reciprocate that honour to Stefan to present the NTDA. <laughs> thank you, Richard, and thank you, everybody, for uh, allowing me this opportunity to, to be with you today. Um, I took a lot of pleasure listening to Mark uh, in, in terms of his presentation this morning because, like the IBR, we are a not for profit organisation. Like the IBR, we are funded by our members. Like the IBR, we're a very small team based in Aylesbury. Um, and uh, if it wasn't for volunteers and, and our executive officers and even our life members who retired still participating in the work of the association, we couldn't achieve what we, we have achieved. Uh, and that's why our partnerships are so important to us. So I applaud you for your work because I can totally relate to it. And it's fantastic to hear that you make such great progress. The other connection is, of course, our guys, you know, they're now faced with having to repair electric vehicles. And it's like, oh, what am I working on here? And gone are the days of, of mechanics. You know, it's interesting watching some of the uh, volunteers walking around working on vehicles outside uh, because those are proper mechanics out there. But our guys these days are technicians. You know, they are working on highly technical, advanced uh, driver assistance systems, and, uh, electric vehicles, and autonomous vehicles now as well coming into play. So uh, it's an interesting time that we're living in. So I'd like to start really by providing some background as to how I find myself here today. So since 1930, the NTDA has campaigned, should I say, uh, not only for improved consumer tire safety, um, but also for the safety of those individuals employed in our industry, and especially those <coughs> working at the roadside. They, they're working just like you are as, as VROs in very precarious conditions in all weathers, any time of day. Uh, and as you can see from this picture here, uh, this is one of our commercial tire technicians' vans. Uh, it was uh, responding to a tire blowout on the highways maintenance vehicle in front. Uh, and basically, on a completely clear road, which was empty really of, of other traffic, uh, it was rear shunted on the hard shoulder by an Eddie Stobart uh, truck, uh, which had basically drifted onto the hard shoulder. We don't know why, we don't know if the driver was texting or snoozing or whatever, but... And luckily, uh, our technician was working a bit further up uh, on this vehicle, and uh, the vehicle's driver, who had been posted as lookout, shouted, Get on the verge! And that's it, the man got smashed up. And it was completely destroyed, as you can see. And sadly, up until 2007, news reports of tire technicians being injured and killed at the roadside was, you know, a frequent occurrence. And uh, for us as an industry, the turning point actually came in 2007, when we lost three technicians, pretty much back to back, uh, on the same stretch of road in Scotland. And this was, you know, the culmination of a very, very bad period of time between 1996 and 2007. <coughs> so, this picture here, again in 2007, shows an ATS Euromaster response vehicle that was obliterated on the 17th of December 2007 in the injunction 17 of the M25. That combined with what had been going on in Scotland, our industry just said, this cannot continue. This, this, this cannot continue. You know, we've got vans, we've got clearly branded vans, we've got flashing lights. We need to train our technicians to be more aware, more situational aware. We need to train them in dynamic risk assessment. We need to make sure that uh, other stakeholders within the industry understand what it is that, 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 that people do. So it's precisely for this reason that we started to work, first of all, informally to start pulling together companies that, that we knew would support this, whether it be the uh, commercial tire technician service providers, or the major manufacturers, uh, or the, the companies requiring our services for fleet management, tire fleet management. And uh, we started to, to pull together uh, training, 
process, uh, assessment process, a sort of practical assessment. And uh, in 2011, so it did take quite a long time, we formally launched REACT, which is the Roadside Emergency Action Concerning Tire Technician Scheme. So currently, there are circa 500 companies participating in the scheme. And I have to say, not all of them are NTDA members. We also have non-members uh, who are uh, heavily involved in the scheme. Uh, the training providers, very diverse range really of training providers, but we have the training centers on Bridgestone, uh, Central Tire, Continental, Michelin, Halford's Auto Centers, recent uh, new member to the scheme, uh, Roadside Safety Training, which is an independent, and many, many more. At Touchwood, since 2011, since the formalization of the scheme and the official launch, we have had no reports of React trained commercial tire technicians being killed or injured at the roadside. Now, going back to before we introduced the scheme and the frequency with which we had deaths and injuries, uh, that I think is the greatest achievement of the scheme, the fact that we're not losing the sections anymore. The, the chairman of, of React for many years was the training manager of Bridgestone, now, now retired, a gentleman called Phil First. Uh, some of you I know actually know Phil from Survive and from other groups. Uh, and I'd like to quote something that he said, because he has also always been very clear about the need for React and why it's just been needed. Replacing commercial tires at the roadside is a unique service that our industry provides. And it does it very well. But clearly it comes with its own huge and very unique risks. Employees in the tire retail sector are invested heavily in React and the training to provide their technicians with best opportunities. More and more fleet operators today also require the technicians working on their vehicles to have a solid understanding of health and safety and health and safety procedure and to be equipped with the ability to practically and pragmatically apply the knowledge to come back to practice in the government. And Phil, even though he retired from, from Bridgestone, actually came back as a training provider because of the demand for, for React training within the industry. So, what does this involve? Well, all tire technicians are taken away to training centres. They're trained against very strict uh, training criteria, all based on the national occupational standards. Our occupational standards for this actually sit with the IMI, um, so yet another institute, but again, standard setting will lead on a par with what the IDR does. The training criteria is regularly reviewed. Uh, most recently, and, and thanks to, to, to Colin and Stephen Burke and Wayne, uh, it's been reviewed by Highways England to make sure that it, it's on par with the requirements of uh, Highways England as well. And uh, will be amended to incorporate all of the new legislation, standards, and best practice that, that, that comes to fore. Once the training has been completed, each technician is assessed. And if deemed, deemed competent, an application is then made to the NTDA for the official license. If not deemed competent, technicians are referred for additional training and assessment. Now, you would think, wouldn't you, that people who've been working as commercial tire technicians for years, and possibly working roadside for years, would come through the training and sail through the assessment. No. Because what we were finding in this process is that uh, although they might have uh, passed the elements in which they had just been taught in terms of the working safety of the roadside, many of them have developed really bad training, uh, lots of training, bad traits in terms of the actual tire fitting skills and tire repair skills. Uh, and some of them took shortcuts, you know, maybe for operational reasons. Some of them have just done it that way, and always done it that way. And of course, we have the classic, and I'm sure you have it within your uh, sector as well. Well, I've always done it. That way. Well, you've always done it wrong. So we then had to introduce another scheme, <laughs> another scheme, the licensed commercial tire technician, to retrain people on how to be a safe commercial tire technician before we could then get them going to the roadside. And we also had jokers, uh, some companies sending fairly young technicians on the REACT training course, and this was to make sure that they could work safely at the roadside, on the strategic road network, and they didn't have driving licenses. Or they'd be banned from driving. So needless to say, they didn't pass the overall training and assessment program. But to date, more than 7,500 commercial tire technicians have been trained, assessed as competent, and licensed across the UK. And many of them have reached the stage now where they've gone through a refresher training and been re-licensed as well. And that's not just in the UK, we've also got this in the of Ireland, mainly through the major manufacturers. But if we take into account 
that there are over 10,000 commercial tire technicians working on the strategic road network every day responding to incidents, you realise that three quarters is a hell of an achievement since 2011, but we're not there yet. And that means that we've got at least two and a half thousand that we don't know about, we don't know what their skill sets are, we don't know if they're working safely, and you know, this, this provides problems. And because this type of work, despite everything that's been put in place since 1930 by the NTDA, all of the training and assessment that's been introduced by uh, REACT, despite all of that, it's still a low entry kind of work. You know, you can get a tire technician who's worked somewhere, who goes and buys a van, who gets it liveried up, gets the equipment with a, with a load from somewhere, and suddenly, yes, I'm a commercial tire technician, but they might never have been trained properly. They might never have been independently assessed by one of these qualified assessment companies, and certainly we have the license that don't know about. And they're undermining our industry. And they're undermining the standards within our industry. And it is a grey area that we have a lot of concerns about. So we hold a national database, uh, similar, I think, to the kind of schemes that are in place with the IBR. And um, it's a further license, it's valid for five years, and it's subject to renewal uh, following the refresher training and uh, assessment uh, that I mentioned. Uh, and certainly, I know Derek's been chasing me, but I need to chase Derek because I know that you've developed uh, an app based. Uh, it's the IBR. It's up, the IBR has, yeah. Derek sort of approached me on this. <laughs> yes, but uh, I need to talk to you guys, Mark, about uh, whether or not we can look at something uh, similar. Because I think uh, in the age of smart technology now, it would be great for our technicians to have something that they can show. Now, the primary reason we wanted to do that is that we still have a lot of companies who, for some reason, hold on to the licenses despite the fact that the rules of our scheme clearly state that technicians must have the license at all times. Some companies hold on to it as some sort of, you will stay with us, you know, because we don't believe in going off somewhere else with your qualification. But we say to them, it is the individual's card, they do the training, they do the assessment. So if you've got a smart version of it, you can just send them, then great. And we celebrate this. You know, this is a, a big thing for us. Are we have commercial tire technicians? Are those roadside heroes that Richard has spoken about? You know, we work alongside you, you guys, and, and, and we're, we're brothers and sisters in arms at the roadside. And uh, every year at our uh, awards, and, and certainly Derek and uh, others that came to our, our award ceremony, uh, we applaud the, uh, the top tier of those, those technicians. And every year we have a, a React technician in the Euro Award. And, um, you know, this is, this is it's, it's such a great thing to actually meet the technicians and to hear their stories because I couldn't do it. And I know a lot of you are VROs, a lot of you have worked roadside and perhaps you can progress through the ranks so you, you, can, you can talk with passion about it. But I listen to some of their stories and uh, it scares the hell out of me. And what drove this hope for me, and one of the reasons that we support the, the worshipful company Wheel Rights Charity, uh, which, which does a, a lot of work with wheel power, uh, the wheelchair charity, is that I went to, my former chairman, I went to Stoke Mandeville Stadium for the um, Interspinal Unit Games. And this is for people who've been injured or have an illness which has put them in a wheelchair. And it wasn't set up at all. I could go anywhere I want, I could talk to anybody I wanted, I could go to any sort of sport, but I used to play and coach rugby, so I'm a passionate rugby man. So I went to watch the wheelchair rugby. And it scared the jeans out of me. Because they're a lot tougher than normal rugby players. They just smash into each other and the chairs are flying and the tires are coming off and quite a scary thing to watch. And I said to this guy afterwards, are you worried about getting injured? He went, no mate, I'm a paraplegic so I can't feel it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the jewel in the crown. The rising star. Because I thought to myself, you know what, we'd be stronger together. And uh, that was in late December 2018, and I met uh, Richard at the IBR's uh, offices in January 2019, and I thought, yes, this is somebody who knows me. This is somebody who speaks my language. This is somebody I can relate to. This is somebody I want to work with. So uh, we became involved with the campaign, first of all, and, and became a sponsor in January 2019. I attended the, the launch in February 2019. Uh, I then spoke. Thank you, at the IVR conference, thanks to Mary and the, and the team there. That was a great event as well, and, and, and again, I met a lot of really enthusiastic, passionate people. Um, and, uh, and then I participated in the 
APPG, and I remember sending lots of pictures of obliterated vans at the roadside because I've been asked, you know, can you show any evidence of, of how dangerous it is for your guys? But how, how much do you need? Um, so that was a, a great thing. And then, of course, we supported the red light campaign because my members, like your members, said, well, it's, it's, it's a no brainer that we get involved with this and, and raise awareness. And in fact, many of my members wrote out to their local constituency MPs. Uh, and I think we had 28 MPs from different parties across the UK say, and, and it, in fact, I had the power of every time somebody said it's a no brainer. That was how uh, people responded to that. And then, as Richard said, he spoke at our conference, and uh, his, his presentation was actually legendary. People still talk to me about it now. What was that guy called who, who said about um, uh, a monk muffin? Richard knows what I'm talking about. Ask him afterwards, because it was a very, very funny line, but it had 200 people at the conference rolling around in the yard. And of course, we've had constant press activity on both sides promoting this. As you can see, we both crack on. <coughs> we don't mess about, do we, Richard? No, no, we don't. But then this came. And suddenly the brakes were on for a while. The COVID proved to be a really interesting time for our industry. The roadside guys, the commercial tire technicians, they actually saw an increase in work in some areas. And certainly, most of the operators were running around 85%, Martin? Yeah, yeah. 85%. Because suddenly, more supermarkets, trucks on the road. More deliveries on the road. So from HGB all the way through to van, it was busy. It was busy, and the demand increased. But on the retail centre side of things, we saw a dip. And there was a big reason for that. It was called the MOT suspension. Six months MOT suspension, suddenly people weren't bringing in their vehicles, no one was checking out their vehicles, therefore there was no uh, upselling opportunity for the for depots, because we weren't, yet, we weren't telling people that their cars were below the legal limits, and we weren't telling them that one of their lights was out, and that the brakes weren't working properly. So suddenly we were faced with, what do we do? So about 30% of my members closed up, closed up the staff, the others kept going. And those that kept going said, we're glad we did it, because that was something saw an increase, believe it or not, in emergency vehicles. Whether it was ambulances, or police cars, or doctors and nurses, paramedics, bringing their vehicles saying, oh, I'm glad you're open. You know, my local garage is closed. So that was an interesting uh, development for us. Uh, but it also allowed those who remained open to really think about safety of customers, how to set up the working environment, the staff. So we've learned some fantastic best practices from that, which has allowed us to uh, put together the basis of a safe tie centre scheme, which we launched a couple of weeks ago. And uh, on top of that, we did some research, independent research, with our members. We benchmarked against other industries, and we interviewed uh, over 2,000 motorists across the UK, saying, what do you expect to see post-prescriptions in a tire centre? And they told us they still wanted hand sanitizer. They preferred <coughs> having the technician sat behind a screen when they booking their vehicles. They still wanted seat covers. They still wanted the technicians to wear gloves, having over keys, etc., etc. So that's what we stuck with. So it was quite interesting that uh, you know people wanted freedom, surely, but they quite like knowing that things have been cleaned properly and it's all safe. Other things we experienced: furloughed staff, people feeling a bit uncertain about the future. We lost them. Master technician level. We were losing people left, right, and centre. Going off to work for Amazon delivery, or in the Amazon distribution centre, or some other delivery company. Do you know why? Because we valued our technicians so much at master technician level that they get five pounds an hour more at Amazon to drive a delivery van and drop parcels off. Brilliant. And then the economics started to change in our world as well. Suddenly, we saw an increase in people buying part all tires. I'd be made redundant. I'm only getting 80% of my, my money, you know. I'm going to go and buy some part more tires. They're only a tenner down the road. It doesn't matter that they're 19 years old and not available. I can afford them. We had shortages. Shortages of tires. Shortages of equipment. <coughs> Brexit screwed things up for us, certainly with Northern Ireland, the Northern Ireland Protocol. As did COVID. Container loads of goods sat in, in ports, unable to, to get them out to be delivered. Uh, we had a, a very legendary situation where uh, containers of government uh, procured PPE, which was deemed unsuitable, was blocking in 300,000 tires in Warsaw. Um, 
And then we had um, the situation where essentially we didn't know from one day to another if we were in restrictions or out of restrictions. Like, you know, it's just a constant fluctuation. But we got through it. And certainly, uh, for those of you who know uh, Richard Goddard, uh, I take you all know it, uh, you know that pandemic isn't going to hold him back. He'd been working behind the scenes, and uh, he was further in the course. He was also checking on me when I wasn't very well last year, so thanks, mate. And uh, he was negotiating not only on behalf of the recovery industry, but he'd also made approaches to Highways England for the tyre industry, considering as his partner. And uh, he facilitated the first meeting with the colleagues from, from Highways England. And uh, that allowed me to then work with Vic and Colin and the other team to negotiate this equivalent agreement that has been spoken about today. Do you know, I am therefore really delighted to be invited to be here today and to share this with you today and to listen to the interesting speakers. It's great to be at the inaugural ProfCon. I hope you have many, many more. I hope that it grows and becomes the leading industry event that it deserves to be. I'm proud to be working alongside all of you and working alongside Richard because together we are making our people safer. And there can be no doubt, together we are stronger. Thank you.